I grow tomatoes outside of our balcony and uh, they're just so much nicer and sweet. <laughs> Look at this one. They're so much nicer and sweeter than the ones you get at the shop. And I just, I like to imagine they're healthier too, because they've been ripening in the sun and not in the back of a truck. So they've gotten all that, all that vitamin D and stuff from the sun. I don't know. That might not be how it works. But uh, yeah, this is just from today. And we already had this in the fridge. So we're clearly not eating them fast enough, or I am growing them faster than we can eat them. So I thought I'd make some homemade fermented salsa because then I can keep enjoying tomatoes into the future and we don't need to waste the food. Disclaimer, I know there are lots of different ways to make salsa, but this is my way. It's probably far away from the traditional way, but it's my way, okay? <laughs> so that's been said. So let's uh, start. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. If you're here for mediocre knife skills, then welcome. This is the place. Oh, three grams away. Want to be accurate? Ah, uh, no. Ah, uh, it's good enough. It sounds right, boy. When you've cored your chilies, it's time to weigh them all. I'm kind of aiming for 220 grams, but I don't think I have enough. Let's see. Oh, is it? No, 195, but that's okay. Look at that. I've actually harvested this garlic myself. Not from the balcony, but from a farm. We pay us some every year and we contribute a certain amount of hours of work and then we get to harvest so it's local organic all of that good stuff moment of truth 50 i think we have it oh great i am just gonna use this entire thing of cilantro you could definitely add more cilantro if you like that but i don't really like cilantro i have a mild case of that cilantro tastes like soap thing Sound right, boy. Chop, 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 chop. Chop, 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 chop. And then I want some red onion. How much is that? That's too much. And then, ah, this is what I think a lot of people are gonna get upset about. I'm gonna add some cabbage. Cabbage is not gonna add a lot of flavor, but it is gonna add some really good bacteria that's gonna kickstart the fermentation. Make it more likely to not go bad. Oh. 
I'm gonna squeeze in six, three, four, five, six, yes, six limes. The reason I've been weighing everything is to know the right amount of salt to add. When fermenting salsa you want to add close to 2.5% and weighing is the only good way to calculate that. You don't have to be good at math, so don't be discouraged. Just take a calculator and punch in the total weight of your vegetables and multiply it by 0.025. And that will give you an appropriate amount. So I need 74 grams. The salt is what will keep the unwanted bacteria from growing in your salsa. So it's important that you get the right amount of salt to keep the bacteria away but less salt will make the salsa more enjoyable. So that's why we don't want too much, we don't want too little, we want to be accurate and weigh it out. Seventy-four grams. Oh god, my big spoon. My big girl spoon. Try not to spill any. Already, you can see there's a lot of juice coming up to the surface. That is obviously from the tomatoes, but also it is the salt working. Okay, I think it's pretty well mixed. I want to taste a little bit. Mm. It's salty, it's sour, tangy from the lime and uh, oh. no cabbage left behind it's clean tastes pretty good to me so I'm gonna let that sit for 15 minutes and come back to it look at that Whoa. <laughs> try not to pour it out all of that liquid has come out that looks ready to me. I've pre-washed these jars. They don't need sterilizing, washing is fine. With just soap and water. Because it's gonna ferment. Oh, that's too much. You need to leave some space up here. So now I've actually got too much. Let's see. Can I? Like that much? I'm staying on the safe side. We need the juice in there. This is really important because that's where all the salt content is. So we need all the ingredients to be covered by the juice so that we keep those bad bacteria away. So, you know, they're floating a little bit. If they're sticking out, then that ingredient might start getting moldy, the one that's sticking up, and then that will spread down into the jar. So we don't want that. So to keep it down under all that juice, I just fold up a cabbage leaf to about the right size and put that in like, like a lid almost. Squeeze that down 
and that will keep everything from floating to the top. When you've finished preparing your salsa, you need to put it away to ferment. Find a location in room temperature, but out of direct sunlight. This is the third day of fermenting. You can see a little bubble here. And here, and here, and you can see even more in real life. And every day you need to open the lid and let out any potential pressure that has been formed from the gases. As the gas starts to push the ingredients up, you want to go in and squeeze it back down. Squeeze all the gas out carefully, as you see. Or it can very easily spill. Everything has gotten softer, so it's normal that you can squeeze it further down than when you first made it. There. That is good. And you can see there are some things floating at the top. But I haven't had any trouble with that before. So that seems to be fine. The only times I've had trouble is when stuff is actually poking up into the air and drying so that it can react with the oxygen, I guess. I really hope this inspires you to try this for yourself and to ferment your own salsa because it's so good for you. It's really easy and uh, you don't need to grow your own tomato or dig up your own garlic or onion or any of that. You can buy it all in the shop. Just remember to add the right amount of salt and you'll be fine. And the cabbage really, really helps. Please don't cut it out. Even though it does sound a bit weird, I understand. And it's so delicious.